Hello and welcome to Biostat Squid. In my previous video, I explained the main concepts behind GSEA. So if you're not familiar with this type of pathway enrichment analysis method, you might want to check it out first. In this video, I will focus on how to interpret the results from GSEA and to interpret the plots. Let's dive in. So there are four key statistics that gene set enrichment analysis will give you. So we have the enrichment score, or ES, the normalized enrichment score, or NES, the false discovery rate, FDR, and the nominal p-value. We will go through each one of them and explain how they relate to this beautiful GSEA plot. Now, these plots always remind me of mountains. And in a way, gene set enrichment analysis is a bit like hiking. For each gene set or pathway you test, you go for a hike. But there's a trick. You don't know how tough your hike is going to be. In other words, the shape of the mountain will depend on the gene set you're testing and your list of ranked genes. And contrary to actual hiking, you want the mountain to be as tall as possible. Okay, so we said that for each gene set, you will go through your list of ranked genes. If the gene is not part of that gene set, you go down the hill. If the gene is part of the gene set, you go up. And this is how GSEA calculates the running statistic as it goes down your ranked list. Think of it as you tracking the altitude while you hike. Basically, this running statistic increases when a gene is in the gene set and decreases when it is not. How much you go up or down actually depends on your differential gene expression analysis results. That is also why the ranked list is very important, where genes are ordered by, for example, fold change. Genes with larger positive or negative fold changes will result in larger increases or decreases than genes with lower ranking. Now, once we reach the last of our genes in our gene list, we have the results for that specific pathway. Looks familiar? It's basically our pretty enrichment score plot. The enrichment score plot shows how this running statistic changes as we walk down the ranked list. But what's important is the maximum altitude you reached. That is the enrichment score, or ES. Well, technically the enrichment score for a gene set is the maximum deviation from zero. Basically the score furthest from zero. So if zero is sea level, let's say, the enrichment score for a particular pathway can be the peak of the mountain or a very deep valley. Gene sets with a distinct peak at the beginning or the end of the ranked list are generally the most interesting. The enrichment score tells you how much uh, the gene set is overrepresented at the top or the bottom of a ranked list of genes. So a positive enrichment score indicates gene set enrichment at the top of the ranked list. A negative enrichment score indicates gene set enrichment at the bottom of the ranked list. Now, it very much depends on what your ranked list actually shows. But for example, you could place upregulated significant genes at the top and downregulated significant genes at the bottom. This way, the enrichment score you obtain for each pathway will tell you if that pathway is upregulated in, for example, your tumor cells or downregulated in tumor cells. Nice. Now, the upper part of the plot shows where the members of the gene set appear in the ranked list of genes. Each bar is basically a gene, so it's a nice visual way of identifying where the genes of that pathway fall in our ranked list. So if they fall more towards the top or towards the bottom, or if they are evenly distributed. So, for example, if we were testing the gene set glycolysis, it would tell us where the genes for glucose isomerase, glucose phosphatase, and so on, are in our ranked list. Where do they actually fall? Great! So, 
If you're dealing with GSEA results, you will often see leading edge subset. What is the leading edge? The leading edge subset of a gene set is the subset of members that contribute most to that enrichment score. So for a positive enrichment score, the leading edge subset is the set of members that appear in the ranked list before the peak score. For a negative enrichment score, it is the set of members that appear after the peak score. But what is the leading edge subset good for? What is its use? So in a way, it tells you which genes of that particular gene set or pathway are the most important for you, because they are the ones that contribute most to that positive enrichment score, for example, so they contribute the most to that pathway being upregulated. If we go to the original publication of gene set enrichment analysis, we will see they also mention correlation with phenotype. You can also see in some publications of uh, gene set enrichment analysis plots done with the gene set enrichment analysis software. Now, the correlation with phenotype basically shows your ranking metric as you move down the list of ranked genes. Now, you can rank your genes by different metrics, but if we go with our example where genes are ranked from most upregulated to least, then the ranking metric will give us an idea of the genes correlation with a phenotype. In other words, genes at the top of the list, or this area over here, will be mostly upregulated in tumor cells. Genes at the bottom of the list, or this area, will be mostly correlated with a healthy phenotype. Nice, so we already covered the plot, but gene set enrichment analysis covers many more statistics. Let's see what they mean. We already covered the enrichment score of a pathway. As we said, the bigger it is, the more significant that pathway of a gene set is. Positive means most of the genes were found at the beginning of our list, negative uh, at the end. So if you use the sign of the fold change as a ranking, it literally means the pathway is upregulated or downregulated. But actually, if you want to compare your results for different pathways, you should not use the enrichment score. Use the normalized enrichment score or NES. NES. Okay, I sound like a cheerleader, but anyway, as the name indicates, it's a normalized enrichment score. Basically, you cannot compare an enrichment score for Th1 differentiation and riboflavin metabolism. Why not? Simply because they are gene sets with a very different number of genes. That is why we need to use the normalized enrichment score. The NES accounts for differences in gene set size and in correlations between gene sets and the expression data set. So, in summary, they can be used to compare analysis results across gene sets. Nice! So, we've basically covered most of the important statistics from uh, gene set enrichment analysis. And before we finish off, I would like to show you what typical results of GSEA look like. These are uh, GSEA results of differential gene expression analysis of lung cancer cells versus normal cells. Now, the table might seem a bit overwhelming, but we've actually covered most of it. We have the list of pathways we tested. So, you see, we also have the ID of the pathway. In this case, they are IDs from KEG database. The set size tells you how many genes are involved in that pathway. And the enrichment score and normalized enrichment score, which tells us if they are up or down regulated in lung cancer cells versus healthy cells. And of course, for each pathway, we also get a measure of how significant they are, the p value. Remember that for each pathway, we're statistically testing if it is overrepresented or not in our list. But sometimes the statistical test is wrong. It concludes that a pathway is overrepresented when in fact it is not, and it was just by chance. The p value is the probability that that happened, that the pathway is found overrepresented just by chance. So smaller p values mean we can be more sure that the pathway is actually enriched. But if you're checking multiple gene sets, 
do not use the p-value. You must correct for gene set size and multiple hypothesis testing. Since we're carrying out many statistical tests repeatedly for each pathway, the probability that some are wrong gets higher, so to say. So to correct for that, it is better to use p-adjusted values. In this case, p-adjusted values are p-values corrected with the benjamini hochberg method, and the q-value might be a better option. It's also a way to correct the p-value, but it is less stringent. You might know the q-value by the name false discovery rate, or FDR. Again, it's just the probability that a gene set with a certain enrichment score is a false positive. For example, an FDR of 25% indicates that the result is likely to be valid 3 out of 4 times. You basically want an FDR lower than 25%, more or less, but you might want to be more stringent if you have less samples or you want more robust results. Anyways, if you're comparing multiple gene sets, use the FDR. And that is all for today. Squid-tastic! I hope this video gave you a clear overview on how to interpret GSEA results. If you like this video, please let me know. And if you would like me to cover a specific topic, leave me a comment down below. Oh, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day and see you in the next one.